and welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell, I'm going to knock these monitors over <laughs> one day. We come up with Hello Excitement. This week, GOG has released Shadow Warrior 2 for the low, low price of free. If you're listening to us live, run, go get it real quick, because I'm going to tell you how to run it with Vulcan, Goodness, and Proton, and the Googs. They've gotten into the video game streaming business, kind of, because reasons. Yo, comrade, do you like Subway? Follow-up question, do you like eating trash? And another Kickstarter project burns out. Let's poke through the ashes. Steam Play goes 2.0. Hope you like Sam and Max. And uh, flippity hibbity habbity hoobity habbity by Bo brings the noise. Let's turn it up for... Yeah, I'm just going to read it as Faudio. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm old man Vin Stone, joined every week by these two psychopathic yahoos. That's uh, the Canadian right there in Toronto, one Jordan Sfang, and the man on the island staying up late past his bedtime at uh, Pedro Montes. You know him, you love him. Because you guys have shown up live, together in Shadow Realm Dynamic, helping us form the last, most intricate, special bit of this nightmare train called Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on in each life, each other's life. Oregon's man, I'm Englishing bad right off the bat. What's up, lad? Since neither of you wrote and or all, I'm going to go first. I'm working on a video. The definitive guy of how to sort your audio hum. 60 cycle hertz, myths, lies, legends, and frozen spaghetti. Stay tuned. Next week, that's going to be out. What's up, Pedro? Uh, over here, I uh, went to see a place. I don't think I've ever felt as claustrophobic just walking into a place. Uh, it's walked in... Uh, Bumped my uh, my ankle on the uh, heater, then just like okay, gotta be careful. Took two steps, bumped my ankle against uh, the like the dresser that was on that particular uh, entrance hall. So it's like, no, 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 no. Let's keep looking. <laughs> so Pedro, how 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 is learning how to walk going? You managed to like <laughs> am- ambulate like a couple meters or <laughs> very painful apparently. Yeah, no, I I don't have much going on here. I'm I got one more week on my contract and I'm going on vacation. Then you're gonna then when you ask me what the hell I've been doing, nothing. I've been sitting on my ass and playing video games and doing now legal illicit substances. Oh so man, I how's that going? Uh, um, that, that, that's that's a couple weeks. <laughs> ah, that's a couple weeks out. So that's gonna be uh, I, I, I was I was watching the news. Apparently, apparently the current the current cannabis supplies in Ontario can only meet about. 40% of the province-wide demand. So that's going to get interesting. All right. Uh, fill some time while I'm taking a look at something. All right. Well, you know, the horse is always partial to the 420 YOLO blaze it for Jesus. Zom pancakes. You, you, you ready? Uh, almost, maybe. <laughs> almost. Uh, uh, we're, we're trying a new thing. You, 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 you close? You close? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're doing this completely on a digital mix, and I am missing a critical piece of equipment right now. So... Yeah, that. Hang on. Uh, uh, Yellow. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, rewind. What's the horse up to this week, Jordan? Nothing. It's the steam. Hang on. Linux update of the week. All right. Well, it's that wonderful, wonderful time of year when Valve, uh, after randomly distributing Steam hardware surveys, decides to publish the results. And lo and behold, we have a little bit of an increase. Linux users yes. have increased by point one point uh, <laughs> one point one percent, which I guess is good. Uh, it, me- it means that uh, people are taking their sweet ass time uh, moving over to Ubuntu eighteen o four because uh, I guess sixteen o four dot five hasn't uh, changed much, but uh, eighteen o four LTS has gone up by not point not seven percent. Why are we talking about such tiny fractions, Ben? This is you're the Linux desktop motherfucker. That's why. <laughs> and uh, apparently, there was uh, another thing that came out of this. Pierre Loup Greffet on Twitter uh, put out the announcement that, oh, uh, we kind of cocked up the Linux numbers because uh, they were rounding down those distros that had like very few users. They were rounding them down to not. So they weren't getting counted, uh, and they've since fixed that, which is why we're up. Uh, if you caught this uh, this hardware survey early, you would have seen that Linux was at um, oh, was it not point seventy three percent or something? Possibly. And now it's up to not point seventy eight. So yeah, those were the people that weren't getting counted. 
just but I think we also got to take a look at uh, we're probably seeing a lot of the influx of hey I, I Linux like seven of them and I mm-hmm. installed Linux and tried to play my Windows games under Linux and it's like okay yes. Steam Play uh, will have inflated the numbers a little bit so most likely next month this will be coming down maybe not well, all the way down but eh. but who 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 knows right maybe maybe this is this is the push maybe as Ben be- said. This is the year of tech Linux desktop. No, source. it's not, man. They immediately <laughs> screeched back over. They're like, ah, oh, I saw a command prompt. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, it terrifies them. They scatter like roaches when they see it. Now, now, to be fair, reading terrifies me as well. It's it's a common reaction. All right. So, do we get any uh, client updates? Yeah, we do. That's the yeah. Uh, October 4th, I wanted to bring this up because I definitely seen some people in our Discord uh, saying the because we reviewed the Proton version of Doom 2016. Mm-hmm. fucking amazing good job on that that actually works like way better than any of our expectations but there was a known issue that none of us experienced but other people had run into now a couple things uh steam chat they're still working on that for some reason big picture update fix loading custom controller layouts in the big picture mode but on linux they fixed a steam cloud save issue with doom 2016 preventing pacific files from getting properly saved which is a roundabout way of saying it would jack up your save game and you'd have to start yeah. back. <laughs> See, I like Doom is fun and all, but I wouldn't have to want to re- go and redo all the shit that I had done previously. That would have <laughs> that, that 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 would have probably stopped me from playing to be oh, honest. Oh, oh fuck, yes. Um 100%. Well, it depends on how far in. Like Yeah. Yeah. But like but like even even going back a few hours, it's like, oh, well that's like I got I got to do this again. Yeah. I've already done this. But yeah, it's not, uh, you know, the worst game to have to replay a certain section. It's like, oh, maybe I'll get to try and find out that where that uh, ledge up there goes and what's up there. I've yeah. done that several yeah, times. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, like, there's enough secrets and shit in Doom that yeah. you, 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 could, you could make an excuse to go back and try and find that stuff. Cer- certainly, though, I can understand people's frustrations when their save games get wiped. Uh, yep. But, uh, Ven, you mentioned a bit of the Proton stuff earlier. I'm got, uh... tired of talking about Proton, so let's <laughs> talk. Let's talk about Proton. Fine. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Steam Play 2.0, uh, the manifests have been updated, and, of course, that means that the um, the whitelist has some more new games. Well, some more old games, in this case. We start off with Hexen, of course, uh, the expansion, Heretic, uh, Zen of Sudoku, because sure, Sam and Max, all of Pedro, them. Are there basically. any games in here that anyone fucking cares about? Well, there's yes. there's, a, there's the 2015 uh, Wolfenstein. Yeah, oh. there's uh, Wolfenstein Old Blood and uh, The Witness. Uh, so Strider might be happy or not. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, here we go. Uh, there's Is also it Commander Keen. Three? Uh, Guacamelee 2, which apparently never got a Linux release. I know, right? Screw them. I'm not buying it. (laughs) But yeah, no, uh, Commander Keen sort of kind of jumped out at me because, oh, there's like a series of games I only ever played when I'd go to the after school activity uh, club uh, during primary school. I'm genuinely curious as to what the hell After Grinder is. (laughs) It's not going to be what I want it to be, but... (laughs) You know what? We we need to make that game. We need to make After Grinder 2, The Grindening. Grindening. Stick Fight the Game is also in there, and that seems like that yes. was in a bundle or something, because I think that yeah. might be uh, one of the keys. And uh, Virtua Creature, because, yes. <laughs> no, no, no relation to Virtua Fighter or Virtua Cop. The <laughs> or Virtual Lawn or anything of those. Uh, or, or, or Virtual Programming, for that matter. <laughs> No, it's Proton programming. Mm -hmm. But yeah, since we're on the Proton, let's keep going with the Mm -hmm. Proton because uh, someone... uh, I thought this was Linux Gamecast, not Linux Proton Cast. See, look, Look, I just saved you... Look, I just saved a motherfucker a comment on YouTube. (laughs) No, they're going to post it anyways. What are you talking about? Well, Strider's about to... He's in the middle of typing in chat right now because stream... Just give it a second. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, someone decided to create uh, a script that runs in the background that looks for games starting up and will apply certain specific fixes to those games. And uh, at, uh, for now, it only has uh, three games, which is Final Fantasy IX, Oddworld, Zabe's Odyssey, and Forts. So basically, it's a Python script. It runs in the background. It has a little folder that you could just drop the uh, the fixes into. And once you start a game that matches the uh, like the ID of the fix, 
it will go, oh, you're running this game. Okay, I will uh, run Proton Tricks and install this. I will set these settings on the uh, wine config for that particular Proton prefix. And now the game runs well enough. Now, I didn't now get a to, chance... to, to your, to your point, it doesn't, actually, it doesn't actually run in the background. It's a Python module that you um, install and then add it to one of the Python scripts that Proton uses, which yes. will then d- determine via its magic uh, what... Uh, what sort of proton configuration to use, and then the sky injects shit on top yes. of that. And uh, yeah, the the import proton fixes line is there. Actually, the website does a pretty good job of explaining it. And I managed to test it on the Steam box with Final Fantasy VIII. And well, uh, even though it's not one of the supported games, I just took the Final Fantasy IX uh, fix, changed the uh, the game ID, changed the. Um, executables that it's looking for yes i see the uh, thing there uh, <laughs> and um it works uh i i gotta try the proton fix to switch uh direct audio to native built-in because that actually fixes the uh, the background music not working in final fantasy 8 so that's uh that's my next thing but yeah it works that's pretty Follow awesome question <laughs> though why do you want to play final fantasy 8 the worst because of the i like no games. no 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 the final, the worst final fantasy game is final fantasy 9 <laughs> i no, have a question <laughs> got a question yeah, for the yeah, class yeah, yeah, um, yes, why 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 are we introducing this fuckery into proton the whole point of proton was to either it works or it doesn't if you want the this fuckery, is for wild west mode no no th- no no, no uh uh-uh. <laughs> fuck that this is not for wild west mode that's to see whether or not something else that's not on the list works or not that's what it's supposed to be <laughs> steam got that shit right it either works or it doesn't this is people listen go get lutris go get play on linux Use wine tricks if you want to do this. We don't need to. In- I'm, but none uh, of those other services integrate directly with Steam. This way, it keeps everything centralized, and all it does is fix that one prefix for that one game that needs the one change to run properly. Hey Pedro, and, g- and, guess and, what? And, and, I, I got a new analysis. You're wrong. Um, then th- this is this is one hundred percent Linux users wanting to take us something that's supposed to work out of the box, saying. Nah, we can fuck with it. We can improve it. And then everything. Goes. I understand what this is. And listen, okay. How about a compromise? L- let's make Wild West mode something more than a checkbox. <laughs> let's put I, a bigger I, I, I barrier think, in there. Because I, 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 somebody's going to use this. They're going to download Steam. They're like, all right, I'm going to get into this Linux gaming thing. And their eyes are going to gloss over like, what? No yeah, one I, I, that I, I just think, wants I, I think, to... Use Proton is going to even consider Please. fucking with Proton Fix. Please. Okay, <laughs> have, have you seen the gusto and confidence some Windows walk into Linux with? They're like I got this. I understand. You, just, you know nothing, Jon Snow. Yeah, that's the thing. They will break whatever distro they install long before they get to the point of uh, actually importing the uh, Proton Fixes thing. <laughs> I think Jordan's hungry. Did you forget to feed him? Oh shit! Was it my turn this? Yeah, time? it was. He's doing that thing again. <laughs> yeah. All right. Up God next, damn it. more proton. Um, m- because more fuck proton. Us. Well, <laughs> so you might have uh, you may have run into an issue where uh, there is some fairly poor performance when you are using proton no esync the uh, environment variable. It turns out it's because your file limit on your configured on your operating system might be a little too low, or rather the open file limit. <laughs> Mm, beautiful. <laughs> now, some of now some um, some of you, um, mainly Fedora users, uh, might or may or may not know that uh, the distribution will keep the number of open file uh, the limit for a number of open files relatively low because for most conventional desktop use, it's not gonna, you, you're not going to need that many uh, files open, and there's a lot of malware that will take advantage of opening a lot of open file handlers and doing fucky shit for interprocess communication and stuff like that. So. Um, the solution here to improve performance drastically is to raise the number of open file limits you, or limit for the number of open files. You can set that in Etsy security limits dot D. Um, the particular path will be different depending on your distribution, but apparently, yeah, you think just demands a ton of fucking temp files. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it requires exactly one temp file per, uh, processing job that the application starts and then uh, eSync goes, okay, which uh, thread is currently available to take this job? Okay, you get it. And so on and so forth for every single one. Which means that for big AAA games is all of them. 
it will open all of the files. <laughs> mm-hmm. if, if, if you're a MongoDB developer, though, then you probably have not, have not run into this issue. Huh. Well, I mean, I've tried it both on and off when I was testing. Something I learned about. Uh, that was that you can use Proton for games not on Steam. I don't know why I tried this. It was curious. I think somebody in Discord was like, can you do this? And I was like, wait a minute. Oh, it might have been empty. So uh, this no, is no, all no, it, was, it was someone who asked empty, but yeah. Okay. And this is all going to be in our show notes. So I'll have a little code thing right here. It's wicked simple. Basically, all you have to do is find where Proton is installed on your box. That's probably just going to be under Steam Apps. Uh, hang on. Is it? No, it's, yeah, Steam Apps, Common, Proton, 3.7, whatever you have. And you're going to need a configuration. This is the only thing that is not completely like laid out for you. You need to install a couple of um, games using Proton just to get that configuration. That is kind of a carp shoot. You can just plug and try these configurations. See, find one that works. Uh, I don't know which one worked out of the four I had in there, but uh, one eventually did. And I was able to play Shadow Warrior 2 from GOG for the price of free. And you can enable the uh, Vulcan overlay. And it works out of the box. Didn't have too much in the way of an issue with it. Uh, performance is completely GPU dependent because it is Vulcan. But at 1080p, I would say it's playable-ish on my 980. Uh, except for the main hub, it is herky-jerk. But once you actually get out into the missions, it's not a bad time. Pedro? Okay. Uh, the, the, um, the, the bad performance is probably because uh, in the script, the dude is actually running it with no e-sync. So if you remove that particular variable, it might work better, or it might just crash and fail miserably. Oh, but, I've tried uh, that enabled and disabled. Fuck yeah, all difference. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is something that we talked about uh, Proton Tricks last week or the week before, which is basically wine tricks, but for all the Proton uh, games that you have installed. This is something that could be easily implemented to that. You just pick a, uh, a Proton installed game and say... Uh, uh, get another application to use this particular configuration, and then you point it at the folder where you installed that game and the EXE for that game. Boom, done. Hmm. I'm envisioning some really fucky thing on the Proton uh, Proton Trucks wiki or like the app compatibility database. It's like here's the game, and here's all the other games whose profiles work with it. It's like trying to play, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Wolfenstein, and you got to run it with Hello Kitty Island Adventures uh, <laughs> like profile. Uh, well, the here's one thing I do want to point out, though, is uh, you need to rename. You don't need to, but if you want to play with the settings is uh, in your Proton directory, rename user underscore settings sample dot py. Get rid of the sample. That way you can enable the DXVK HUD mm-hmm. and get your uh, dev info, FPS, cutoff logging, all that fun stuff. So there's a the thing. Go play with it. If you're listening to us live, I think you can still get it if you're listening to it. And it's Monday. Wah, wah. All right, Jordan, your favorite game. And it's not Proton. <laughs> Dol- <laughs> Dolph with friends. Lo and behold, if you wanted to drown yourself after playing this game, you can't. Because now you have f- custom floaties that will keep you afloat and alive. And enduring more and more of this awful, awful fucking game. I they want also, one. It's so cute. Yeah, they, they, they got, they got uh, custom ball toppers now. They got a creepy bear. A couple other things. Uh, you can finally customize floaties. So you can... I want to say that looks like if the fucking... If Tux and Beastie had, like, a child, that's what it would look like. <laughs> Listen, if we're being honest, it looks like something that a super Tux could. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so well, welcome to Team Golf Trust 2 edition. You can get some hats for your balls. Um, and that, that that's about it. They, they have uh, a couple new things they added to the level editor as well for people who want to construct fucky things to torment their friends because they don't want them to be their friends anymore. So I, it, it, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Um, is this ever going to come out of early access? Stealing my bit. Still in my bed. I was, hey, I wrote it in the show notes. <laughs> hey, man, I wrote the show notes. Fuck you. Um, here's, yeah, we're, the, see, here's the secret. We're all reading off a script that Ben wrote right now. This is, man. This is the most elaborate hoax six years going, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, no, Pedro, I completely agree with you. Is this like one of our last remaining games we can give shit for being yeah. permanent? Because <laughs> Distance even came out after six years. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, well, what golf has only been in early access for what two at most? Two maybe. I don't know if Foxy well, was around. He would tell us. He would give us like a timestamp on it. It's been uh, a 2016, minute. so January 2016, so okay. almost three. <laughs> almost three, but hey, it's it's kind of fun. It's not bad. I think it's on sale right now. So if you have friends playing it in forever alone mode, not fun. If you got a group of people to play it with, yeah, go check it out. It's all right. Yeah. So uh, Rags of the North. Ragnarok awaits. So this is uh, this is Norse or Northgard rather. Uh, it's a Viking real time strategy game that uh, is getting some Linux support or has some, I think. Anyways, um, <laughs> they have the new Ragnarok update, uh, and by that I mean there's a new map with a volcano in the center that fires rocks randomly on the map that turn into golems if not mined. And what creatures from Jewish folklore are doing in the Viking apocalypse? I have no idea, but I'm not gonna stop them because <laughs> I'm not. Trying to steal Christian baby blood? Question mark or am I? By the way, send me some Christian baby blood. I'll PM me. I'll give you my address. Um, they've also added a random, uh, random events like a faction of edgy drow who will come to your, uh, come to your units and you know try and attack them. Uh, the expansion uh, with all this stuff in it is free, by the way. So if you already own the game, you will like some Viking real time strategy. Um, you can get a whole whack of content on top of your initial purchase. So that's that's definitely a thing. Hmm. Yeah, no, I had a look through it. I uh, went to the store page. It's uh, where's Linux? <laughs> and uh, Ven pointed me to a uh, single uh, <laughs> uh, issue thread thingy that they have on their Steam forums that apparently it doesn't work so well. <laughs> apparently, it doesn't work well when you said that because this was like one of my issue trackers. I was just seeing it popped up with update and it had Linux and. Yeah, you go to the page, it has Windows and Mac, and then I just went to the discussion forum, typed in Linux, and I was like, yeah, there's a Linux version, because people okay. are bitching about it <laughs> not working right. Um, that explains that, then. <laughs> there's that. I mean, I don't know if they pulled it. Uh, I, it's still in the depot, so if mm -hmm. you have it, go check out your new update. Now, let's talk about something completely different, Russian subway dogs. You know, remember back in the day when like arcade games made like the premise of them made absolutely no goddamn sense. This is sort of a harken back to this. Uh, this is on. a game. Uh, what would be a good example of that? Like Burger Time or some shit. That'd be perfect. That was based on a true story. Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> any, anyways, this is this is an arcade game where you get to play as a dog and running through the Russian uh, metro. So basically this is this is the metro sequel that we're actually going to get on Linux. Um Yeah, and your the goal of the game is to bark at people and get food and survive and I don't know, fuck bitches. Kind of like um kind of like a Tokyo Jungle if any of you have played that game. Anyways, oh. um Yeah, they they uh the uh, the the latest update adds uh, a freaking unlockable red Chinese panda. Or Chinese communist mm -hmm. Maoist red panda. I I'm not sure how that works. Uh, apparently, what what really blew me away was the roster includes the This Is Fine dog from Gun Show, and I'm a big fan of that uh, webcomic. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it also the latest update also brings Linux support. So now you can you know fuck bitches on the Russian subway, <laughs> and uh, yeah, park at people for food. Yeah, no, I, the only thing I remember from Tokyo Jungle is just having Pomeranian just maul random deer and other uh, herbivores that showed up. That was that was great. Uh, don't know about this one. Looks all right. It, it, I, I mean, it, it's it, it, it's fourteen ninety nine. Like, um, yeah. I'm not entirely sure how it works. The developer like ping me on Twitter. He's like, DM me if you want a review copy, and I. Sorry, I never got around to like DMing you. <laughs> Thanks. <for> the offer. <laughs> LGC cares. Um, mm. I might shoot him an email. <laughs> okay, you, you go look that up because I'm not. Um. <laughs> okay, so uh, Counter Strike Global Offensive. It's been a while since there, since there were any you know Linux specific updates, but uh, I started the game last week or the week before last, and immediately went, "Oh, this looks different." This looks very different. Uh, so there's a new update uh, on the 3rd of this month. The uh, dedicated Linux server has been updated. And uh, there was an issue with the old uh, Steam, uh, Steam client.so, uh, which didn't exactly support multi-threading. Now it does. Uh, there's a bunch of fixes for performance with the new 
big difference, which is the main menu. Now they call it the uh, panorama. It looks... Well, it looks like uh, your PUBGs and your uh, your cullings and your whatnot. But there was uh, there were several uh, issues with that, namely the performance was crap. Apparently, it was uh, leaking video RAM uh, usage badly with OpenGL. Uh, there were a couple of other issues performance-wise that they also fixed. Which is good to see. They haven't forgotten that the Linux version is a thing. So, thanks for that, Valve. Appreciate so, it. So, <laughs> basically, as the one person here who knows what a CS:GO is, are there any competitive players playing it on Linux? Uh no. But that has to do with the uh, the way that Linux currently handles mouse acceleration. Yeah, it's not related to CS:GO proper. It's related to desktop environments and graphical sessions handling cursor speeds in different ways that's just a crapshoot <laughs> basically stick right. one learn it and whatever you do find a way to disable mass acceleration in the xorg.conf file just play counter-strike through the unity desktop and your problems will go away no, that's what Pedro no, says. Won't. <laughs> that's what See, Pedro Unity says. Unity is all right. even worse because it doesn't let that's you. That's what Pedro says. Oh, so, look at all that endorsement for the Unity desktop environment. <laughs> you, Fantasy strike. You bitches um, get it out of your system. We're almost done with the segment. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Unity doesn't let you change sensitivity or acceleration uh, in uh, their. I know. Settings. Isn't is, is, isn't it great, Pedro? Don't you agree? Yeah, you do. It's um, absolutely fucking horrible. <laughs> it's the best. Fantasy Strike, uh, it's that fighting game that's supposed to be accessible to non-fighting game players. They have an update. Um, this one comes with uh, two big things. A um, ranked mode, so now you can objectively prove to your friends and random strangers on the internet that you are better than them. <laughs> and um, one one thing that's actually kind of interesting, um, the game will now feed you uh, information via this symbol, and they give you a little legend later on in the article. You can find the link in our show notes. Um, to basically state who is going to recover first and by how much, which is good data to have um, in a fighting game, uh, especially if you're trying to stunlock people or if you're trying to find your opening to get through something or to get through a defense or an offense. Uh, normally, you gain that information just by practicing and practicing and practicing because it's not readily available to you. Uh, Fantasy Strike uh, wants to make that information available to you so that you can, you know, play the game effectively, even when you're still learning the ropes, which I think is a good idea. And it's yeah. consistent with their goal of trying to make fighting games like accessible. So all in all, this is this is just shaping up to look really good. I'm looking forward to when this comes out of early access. Uh, yeah, this already looks really good. <laughs> it's really uh, thanks for the developers. They. They just contacted us like, and they could read too, because they're like, Hey, we can read good. So don't make fun of us. And they sent mm -hmm. us some keys up until that point. I'd never heard of it. And it's really polished. If you're going to get into it, development comes in chunks. Like it is either feast or famine with this game. So, I mean, you'll get, we'll get this chunk and it can be a couple of months before we see some additional updates. Unfortunately, like right now it does not have correct button prompts for anything Thank other you. than a PlayStation controller. Jordan, you'd be the happy one. It's PS4 controller. I, 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 I was just going to ask if they if they make you, if they tell you about their titties, their, their game UI <laughs> controller titties. Uh, <laughs> everything is rebindable. And I mean, it's a really good looking game because I remember when we looked at it, I talked about it in an earlier show that I first fired it up. I was like, holy shit, I mean, this, this is stupidly well done. So uh, yeah, get that fixed. Come on, Let, let's have that. It's currently 1999. And there is uh, a soundtrack for it. If that's your kind of thing. True story. So, there, there are people who just listen to like video game music, and I don't, I don't understand those people. But you know, rock on, whatever. Mm -hmm. There are people that uh, just remix video game music, and then they sell it for money. <laughs> yeah. So uh, up next, we got a story that Foxy sent us because you can do that if you're oh. a Patreon. Yes, indeed. So uh, there's a 1.0 release which happens to include a bit of Linux, and it is a gummy's life. So uh, Foxy described this as a better uh, gang beasts. 
I say it's Gang Beasts with particle effects because it's basically the exact same game. You have it's Gang Beasts with a... sexy hamburger people. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say that burger is oddly hot. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I feel hungry. That's what I feel about it. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's Gang Beasts. That's what it is. If you have a look at the trailer or the screenshots, it's oh, uh, it's uh, really floppy characters trying to punch each other and grab each other and throwing each other off of stages it's it's gang beasts but uh, they have particle effects and um juice and sexy effects. hamburgers <laughs> they uh, actually ask you to knock the juice out of everything in the trailer so mm-hmm. yeah why, why, it's, why do you hate, why do you hate juice so much pedro really what did the uh, juice do to you uh, juice has done nothing to me uh, i i just prefer soda all right, hang on. This is actually going to be interesting. <laughs> Local multiplayer up to 16 players. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> that's, a, that's a straight up tsunami of fuckery right there. Yeah. I'm guessing that, online that, that, multiplayer that. will only support eight, but well, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, like, the, those maps look big too. So, yeah, you could get up to some fucking shenanigans with 16 people. Now, really, all they would have to do if we're being. 100, we love you, Double Fine. You've always been good to us, even back when we first started. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All they would have to do to improve on Gang Beast is to give me some sense of what the fuck I'm doing in this game. I think that's kind of part of the design. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, as far as like hints with feedback and control and like what's going on other than let's see if I can just stick to something and run. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that Uh, didn't sell me on the Gang Beast, man. (laughs) Well, it's regular gang bang. Coming up next. (laughs) Uh, we have a very short news segment where we talk about some FNA stuff and why Kickstarter is the greatest thing to ever happen to game development, period. We're really slutty wall sockets with how shamelessly we plug ourselves. You know, really, did did, did we need really slutty wall sockets as a show title, Pedro? Did you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> Jeez. I, I, I mean, I mean, it's like, it's like if you want to if you want to dress up as a wall socket, like the other 365 days of the year, they have like proper attire for that. But you want to do it in fucking October? Wait, wait, no, you're yeah. a slutty wall socket. All right, um, we got we got we got to thank all of you slutty wall sockets from for uh, helping us out. Uh, heading on over to linuxgamecast.com, clicking the support the show button, and following the myriad of hyperlinks there that will lead you to prompts for your credit card information, all of which them. you can then fill out. Hack the planet. Um, Indeed, <laughs> except for that one Amazon link that leads to our uh, wish list. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, you can also head on over to uh, listen, man. Our, that our, wish our, list has like incredibly extravagant uh, Hollywood shit, like shelves on it, <laughs> and and and, and uh, LCD panel, <laughs> and a solid state drive, and the monitor. It's exciting Much stuff. SSDs, man. <laughs> You can, you can also head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast to give us that recurring love week after week after week. And doing so, we'll get you cool stuff like access to the dis- ah. yeah, really? <laughs> Discord. Really? Discord. Yeah, I, it tastes like burritos, too. You know, I don't access- think he's ever made it through an entire episode without a... <laughs> right. I, I, I know, it's like my insides hate me. Um, but yeah, being a, being a Patreon gets you cool shit like access to our Discord, early show note access. You can be like Mr. Foxdog and tell us what to talk about on the show. Uh, you you can correct us before we make the mistakes. Right, yeah. It's it's like it's like pre-trolling. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that works. Uh, you can show up for playing uh, games with us when uh, we do things on Thursday or Friday with Ven in the Trivia Night. Not on Tuesday. Pedro Pedro is all about keeping that Tuesday to himself. Um, yeah, uh, do we have any new people we got to thank this week, though? We don't um, have anybody this week, but uh, hey, man, if everything goes right, uh, me and Pedro are going to have sexy time on Tuesday with some Orcs Must Die too. Ooh. Yes. So that means we're going to be, uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of my desktop because that game likes to crash a lot. Uh, <laughs> we don't have too much this week. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. If you can, ah. That's the best way to support this nonsense. All the stuff that we do. And we like to give you some stuff back. We like dancing for our money. But I uh, do need to point out, I had something arrive from Amazon. I'm not going to say what it is because I want to give the person, whoever had sent it, if they want to like put their name and get on Frank's. Uh, find up standing cannibal wall. You can, we can take a look at that. Where's Frank? There he is. He's hanging out. He's always yeah. in the credits doing his thing, which I just remembered I forgot to make. So I'm doing that in post. Um, uh, here's the thing. Uh, if you want your name on that, let me know before next week. I'm not going to say what it was in case, you know, everyone's like, Oh, it was me. So that's the thing. Another thing. Um, 
September had five weeks in it, and that might have triggered some funkiness with Patreon, with processing. The only reason I'm bringing this up, because it caught me, because I went to I'm, seven people I back on Patreon, and I went to go watch a pre-show that was mm-hmm. like time-released, like we do. And I was like, why can't I? Patreon's like, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, what's going on? So I went and checked my thing, and on two out of the seven, didn't get processed. So I had to run that through. So people might want to check that or not. I don't know. We're not your boss. And, uh, but thanks for making this business happen. Um, is News. that it? Are yeah. we done chilling? Yeah. She'll, she'll, no, she'll time is over. Oh, hang on. News, I got to put away time. the penguin. Uh, <laughs> wait, I got to label this thing something other than like random AFG. Bob, <laughs> Bob, Bob, Bob one, Bob two, Bob three. I, 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 Bob I, penguin, not gif. There it is. All right. To the news. <laughs> All right, so Flippity-Dippity-Dippity-Bop-Bop-Bop-Bo uh, has put out a bit of an announcement with FNA 1810 now being available. Uh, the F-Audio uh, subsystem for, well, audio is now available, and uh, basically it is a um, audio-slash-media-slash-exact uh, rewrite. So if you have a game that uses uh, Exact or really any of, of the other DirectX um, or uh, XNA based audio systems, well, you don't need that anymore. FNA will handle that for you too. Uh, this, of course, also means that uh, since this is a flippity jibbity bo Ethan's work, uh, this uh, will be open source. And uh, if the wine people designed to integrate this into wine proper or even have it like as a separate library that you can optional optionally install like uh pulse audio was for the longest time um that would be very 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 nice to see because then all of your skyrims and your uh fallouts will uh have audio working out of the box without you having to worry about so exactly uh, I think Ethan was talking about this too. There was a blog post of his we covered a while ago where he was talking about how they were trying to uh, re-implement some stuff that was originally in Wine so that they could understand how Windows interacts with yes. that particular subsystem. <laughs> I think it actually did have to do with uh, this exact rewrite. But the entire audio subsystem system has been overhauled. You can now control what audio... Uh, you can uh, set uh, control sample rates and sh- number of channels via environment variables, which are, he uh, goes into apparently is why a lot of games don't support uh, surround sound out of the box. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now, FNA games have the ability to do that. You can just sort of set that in your launch script, which is pretty neat, all things considered. Awesome. Uh, So if you're a game developer uh, who is working on an XNA game, or uh, maybe you're just looking for something to base your game off of, definitely give that a pull and and, uh, work with it, because FNA is pretty fucking sweet. Yep. (laughs) All right. Up next, uh, we go down, down. The burning ring of fire. It's back from the dead, bitches. Uh, from the Kickstarter update. Thank you, Empty. You're in chat room right now. It's like, hey, guys. Hey, guys. by the way, I got your show note things figured out, buddy. Uh, honoring our promises. You remember uh, it was Descent Underground. Now it's just Descent. The long, long, long wait is over. Uh, as we promised last year, you will soon be getting your hands on the reimagined Descent. Very soon, our friends at Little Orbit, the company that actually knows how to make games that they handed it to, will announce a couple of releases, a PC beta, and a full retail release that includes console versions that no one asked for. But <laughs> So they released a trailer, and you're looking at it. Audio listeners, uh, really all I got to say is... Oh, it, God. Well, let me try that again. All I got to say is... It's in 30 frames a second if we're being polite about this. Um, Maybe they recorded it off a console. Hey, man, it cool shots fired. Uh, (laughs) It looked like 15 at one point. Here's the thing. A trailer recorded at 30 frames doesn't exactly instill me with confidence. And like you said, maybe 15, maybe that's a thing. But um, basically, here's what brass tacks. I mean, this game's two years late. They voluntarily delisted it from Steam for whatever. Oh, they went to their own like funding thing to get mm-hmm. more money. It was like, that's a dumb idea. That's going to fail. That failed. Um, but they're planning to enter another closed beta, followed, I'm guessing, by another early access round to the <laughs> sequel, Pedro. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, no, this isn't uh, even double dipping anymore because... 
They uh, got funded on Kickstarter, then they went into early access, then they got a publisher and pulled the game from Steam and did their own funding thing. Then uh, they're going to go into beta of a sort, which is just early access round two. So that's double, double dipping. Now, I, I, I will I will say, though, that a lot of us got a copy of Descent because it went on sale for like a for 10 cents at one point. It was a buck. It all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a dollar. It had a ridiculously <laughs> high early access price. It was like 30 bucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they never made much progress on it. But it was the first Unreal Engine 4 game that we saw on Linux. That was really just our only curiosity with it because this is not made by the developers, original developers from Descent. However... I mean, reading through their Kickstarter thing, they're like, hey, we're keeping up promises. I mean, it really comes across as like they want a fucking cookie and a pat on the head for doing what they said they were going to do in the first place. Uh, After taking money. Good job, yeah. guys. Uh, you did what you said you were going to do in the first place by giving it to another people who could actually make the game. Uh, three years later. Mm-hmm. But hey, at least they're doing it. <laughs> at Progress. least they're actually releasing hey, it. Hey, you know what? Look, at the, <laughs> It's a better love story than Stainless and Carmageddon. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. Which, 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 which is which is only slightly worse than limit theory. Um, <laughs> so that that that's a, that's a sick transition to the next story. Um, update number fifty three on limit theory Kickstarter. The end. It appears if our pally here has uh, or Josh Parnell has burned out. Unfortunately, he was a little too ambitious in his goals for limit theory, which was supposed to be an RTS RPG span sandbox game. That did everything in, you know, shad ice cream and puke tacos and gave you a hand job. And he couldn't do it. Uh, they, they, he ran out of money from the Kickstarter. They, um, he was trying to fund it on its own and just couldn't do it. He was tired of developing it. And on the bright side, he's, he's releasing the source code. Though the dude admits that it's not really in much of a usable state. Um, I figure that's honestly the least you can do if, like, you're pro- if you are a Kickstarter project who failed. Yeah, at least make the source available. Well, so that I mean, in all fairness, it's the least you can do when you got one hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars out of your initial goal of fifty. Yeah, mm-hmm. there but, was either that, really bad budgeting from the start, or I I don't know. No, well, it, it, <laughs> it's it's another Kickstarter project that due to like poor scoping and budgeting that ultimately results in developer burnout. Because what happens is. Developers being a developer is not a project manager make. There was a huge kerfuffle about like non-technical people on like the being valuable in the Linux kernel project. They absolutely are. The people who keep fuckers on task and meeting mm-hmm. deadlines are absolutely important because you can write the best code in the world. No one fucking uses it. Then you've just wasted your time. You're jerking yourself off. And I mean, yeah. I feel for the guy because you know small ambitious projects like these always start off with the best of intentions. And you need you need the dedicated project management people. You need the dedicated accounting people to say, listen, this is how long we can realistically support ourselves mm-hmm. compared to this is how long we figure this will take given your ability to produce content and code. So yeah. folks, budget budget project management people into your into your game development. You get a budget that's not necessarily something that you're gonna see off the bat. A lot of yeah. these things that I've walked into, it is usually down to Feature creep and chasing a dragon. Like yeah. we want this one thing and we're going to all of our resources on this or getting to the end. And it's been done a million times switching everything up. Yeah. And yep. it's uh, with this one, at least uh, the developer says the engine is there. You can, uh, it's going to be open source, so you can put it to use, although with uh, stuff like unity and unreal and everything else being basically free to use nowadays, who the hell is going to use that? Uh, and the Lua code that was going to be the game itself, well, that's uh, that's a crapshoot. That's uh, well, in a completely non-workable state, unfortunately. And 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 you know what? You know, maybe maybe the engine is useful. Maybe maybe someone like Godot or Leadworks or Unreal will stride yeah. or some of the code out of there because it does something yeah. particularly <laughs> efficiently. Who knows? But you know, it's available. You can poke through it eventually. Uh, maybe we'll cover it when um, the guy actually makes with the tar balls. A hundred percent. And hey, at the end of the day, it's better than just disappearing with the money. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, All right. So this is the thing. Google rolled out. The story comes from ours, like all this business in our show notes to announce Project Stream. Yes. Original thinking from the Alphabet Corporation, a test of game streaming in Chrome. 
Play Assassin's Creed Odyssey through a desktop class Chrome browser starting October 5th. That's right. You can sign up and kind of hope that you're going to get in. Pedro, what's game streaming? I've never heard of it, but you're a huge fan. Uh, no, no, I'm not. So game streaming, as it currently stands, is, uh, well, if you already don't own the games that you quote-unquote buy on Steam, with game streaming you'll owe them even less because they will be hosted on a server somewhere and uh, pray pray to whatever deity you worship that your internet Zeus, connection doesn't Zeus go anywhere. Case. So this is the yeah. exact reason I don't use Netflix because I don't own everything I watch. But that's the and thing. I, uh, you, it's it's you the see, same thing with Steam as well. You don't own anything you fucking buy on Steam. Yeah, there's an argument to be made there that None, you still really, get the data legally files. You don't. Um, yeah. Hey man, you, you get the data is, files in your hard drive. <laughs> I only I only use stuff that's DRM free, but then you got the next little hard motherfuckers. I only buy physical copies. See, you, you can go down this rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, you can, but with Steam, it's easy <laughs> enough to pull the data files, go onto Game Copy World, download the crack, and now you can play the game without Steam. On that's Linux, feasible. On Linux, if need be. There's you, fucking crack files use... for games on Linux? All right. Well, for, you'll for, need to for, use for, for Proton, at that anyways. point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, so, uh... So, uh, so here, here, and back back up, back on topic, as much as Pedro loves to shit on game streaming, you know, there, there, there's a story here. Um, you can play Assassin's Creed Odyssey if you want to assassinate people uh, through Chrome. <laughs> uh, then is it uh, US only, it seems? Yeah, you, you need to have a certain amount of freedom in your life in order to get <laughs> yeah, into this. I, <laughs> I, I, I can't do it. I'm not free enough. No, nope. <laughs> you're not. Um, yeah, hundred percent. They said that, uh, you know, Hey, look, it's Google. So if any company that could pull this off and has the capacity to do it, it'd be Amazon or it'd be Google. Uh, the infrastructure in the United States. Ha, good luck. I literally almost make a car payment for my fucking internet every month. So, well, the- they're, 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 they're saying that to do this at the bare minimum is you need 25 megabit down, which mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, on, honestly, like in Canada, that's going to that's going to run you about 50 bucks. I don't know what the equivalent. Well, that's not too US bad. Um, I mean, this is the future. I mean, natural progression is I mean, we joked about soon. It won't matter. You'll play everything. In a web browser. Yeah, this is a beta test to that. That's what it's going yeah. to be eventually. I don't mm-hmm. see it being, you know, 10 years away, maybe. But I also want to keep this in mind because saying Googs can pull this off, they're the ones to do it. They're also the ones that will randomly kill projects for fuck and or all reasons. The, the, yes. This is this is true. And a lot of, but the, the, the colliery to that is that a lot of Google stuff that they produce will eventually trickle through and get open sourced. Uh, a la Kubernetes, or someone will re-engineer essentially the exact same thing that uh, Google was doing and release that to the public. So even if Googs does kill it, someone might be able to pick this up in the future. And of course, Ben, you you bring, you raise a very valid point. So if it's going to be Google doing it, it's only going to fucking work in Chrome, and it's it's gonna only be going to under. work in the U.S. for the longest time. Still, uh, and it, it, locking gonna... podcasts there, Google. It'll be DRM'd at the wazoo too. Are we are we region locked? Are we not? I think the only place we're not allowed is like Pyongyang or something. Oh no! In the Google Podcasts, it, you're not allowed in the UK either. You're not allowed any fucking where. <laughs> really? Linux Gamecast yeah. is banned in the UK. Well, God save the Queen. It's Google Podcasts on the Play Store just does not work in the UK. It, just not a thing. Listen, it's it's only a thing I've done to Pedro, and it's a practical <laughs> joke that's gotten out of hand because I knew we wouldn't check with anyone else. Um, mm-hmm. This this is neat, but I we're long. All right, how about hmm? See, this is what I've always thought about this. I think the stopgap measure is a service. Play what you want, Netflix, but. You get to yes. download the game, or at least a big honking fucking chunk of it, to make up for latency issues, connectivity problems. Because even on the best of the days, even with my business, fuck me, that's why payments. Th- this shit's not perfect by a long stretch. And I know the same yeah. goes for like Gigapower or um, any other fiber services. Yeah, and, and, and the, 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 other, the other thing too is like, a lot of this is just, oh... Uh, Google has been doing a lot of work with low latency streaming optimizations. That's all algorithmically controlled. And if something falls outside the scope of the algorithm to, that um, it's unable to compensate for, your game will be unplayable. Yeah. 
And the way that the games industry has been going lately, there's a lot of uh, AAA publishers interested in game streaming. And I will tolerate like a Netflix style thing where you pay X amount a month and you get to play whatever. That's acceptable. Uh, the moment you have to start paying AAA prices on a video game that you don't even get the data for, that you, it's just a streaming service, that's my problem with that. Once they that's make it work out of the box. Streaming. Once they make it work out of the box, you don't have to worry about it. But, you know, we're talking about, we're having, like, legitimate fucking problems with hardwired connections. Start thinking yeah. about when you have, like, 5G rollouts. Then, on top of that, the person's on Wi-Fi's. Dude, no way. Or, yeah, too many, too many people are playing games in your apartment, so you can't play anymore. Right. Yep. A lot of hurdles to overcome. Anyway, we need to overcome this segment. Yes, and why don't we take a nice, relaxing walk through the gardens between, which is, incidentally, the game that we're throwing chairs at. Coming up next! Motherfuckers, it's chair position time. This is where we take a game, we talk about it, we do a little bit of QA on it, and then we give it a score. Uh, we, we grade everything on pass-fail for does it launch, performance, graphics, controls, and then afterwards we talk about the fun. We give it a score from one to four chairs on that. This week we're taking a look at the Gardens Between it's by the Voxel agents. There's no voxels involved. Developed on the Unity engine. You pick it up for about uh, 20 of your local, what, currency? What is it? The Gardens Between is a surreal puzzle adventure. It follows best friends Arena and Friend as they fall into a mysterious world of beautiful garden islands, manipulate time to solve the puzzles and the secrets and discover the secrets to each of the islands. The devs did send us some keys for this, so thanks a lot. Now we're going to shit on your game. Ben, how'd it work on Ubuntu? <laughs> on Ubuntu 1804. Whatever it is this week, Ryzen 1700, a 980 powered. Does it launch? Yep, out of the box, no issues. Unity title. Actually, come to expect that. I appreciate it. Performance, solid 60, out of the box at 2160. Didn't try it at 1080 because it ran so well. At UHD, I did unlock it. From VSync, and it was averaging about 74 to 78. No issues there. Graphics, same thing. Look at it. It works. It's kind of brilliant. It's kind of pretty to look at. More about that in the fun section with controls. Steam controller, the only thing I tried. Not a problem. There's not a lot to it. There's really only like three inputs that you would ever have to deal with with this game. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So, I'm happy to say, clean bill of health, solid four. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 2864 bit, the i7 6700K, the GTX 1080 Ti. Um, yeah, it fucking launches, comrade. Uh, performance at 1080. I took the performance or the frame limiter off and disabled VSync and was getting well over 200 FPS at 1080 and over 100 at UHD. Graphics wise, yeah, it has an aesthetic and it shows up on the screen, which is about all I can ask for in most games. And controls, you send your children left, send your children right, spam X. Goodbye, children. Four chairs. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, over here on Solus 3.99999 with the um, uh, GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600, it launches absolutely fine. Uh, it is locked at 60 because it has both the frame limiter and VSync on by default, but playing the game, I didn't actually see the need to undo the VSync, which on a Unity title, that's a first. Um, it, the graphics are very simple but effective, and uh, they are very, very pretty, and they also work just fine. Controls, yeah, it's left, right, and indirect. It would be very hard to screw that up, and they certainly didn't. That's a clean bill of health for chairs. Well, there you go. If you want to play it on Fedora, Ubuntu, or Solus, you can. Then, Jeff, fun. Hey, man, uh, I really kind of enjoyed that game, but right out of the gate, I got to say, I got to be that guy just for a minute. Bear with me. I know someone was the, the, trying the, the, this level specifically. Yeah. OK, <laughs> um, I know someone was trying to be hip in that, you know, super silly crow level that we're looking at for the audio listeners. But that TV that you see, mm, I don't hit RCA in. First time I played it, because I went back to play the level to double check, but the first time I played it, it was a Famicom console hooked up, and that critter only had RF out. I, interesting enough, the second time I played the level, it was like a PlayStation clone. Anyway, <laughs> uh, don't get me started with the Famicom, with the Channel 95, 96 requirements. That's a whole different can of chainsaws. Also, the power plug on that strip, Type 1 power plug. So that's New Zealand or Australia, kind of brilliant. Um... To the game itself, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, eight. Eight's the magic number of button presses required to exit the game. 
that kind of stood out to me. It didn't want to quit me. And if I'm going to pick nits, uh, those got to be about the most androgynous damn kids I've ever seen, man. I mean, I had a hard time sorting who was who. Not that it matters. I was just like, hmm, okay. So, unlike the wannabe art piece walking simulator Gone Home, the Gardens Between manages to tell a story and provide a, get this, actual game. Huge fan of that and my walk. I mean, this is not a walking simulator by any means. Each stage provides a different puzzle that has to be sorted using the time mechanic that you're seeing. You're walking forward, you're walking backwards. That sounds like it might get a little old with the quickness, but they do a good job at keeping things fresh. Puzzles, they range from simplistic to legitimate head scratchers, and there's no timer or health meter that you have to worry about, so you can sit back, relax, and speculate on what type of grisly, twisted fate awaits our two young adventurers. My only complaint, though, is the forward and back mechanic required to solve the puzzles kind of takes forever. Ah, time joke, whatever. <laughs> Fortunately, reverse is a bit faster, and still, even with that, it can become a slog in areas that require you to fondle multiple pieces on the set in the puzzle. And if I'm going to be 100% honest, if you could move, say, maybe three times your normal speed during the game, if that was an option, you could probably nerf this entire adventure in slightly over an hour. But as it stands, the Garden Between is going to give you between two, four hours of playtime, depending if you want to play it and experience it, or if you want to vin your way through it, which is just getting mm -hmm. shit done. It... It's genuinely well done. I mean, look at it. I mean, you can tell a lot of care went into the creation of this. So I'm not poo-pooing on it in any way. I enjoyed it. But over an hour until I was like, whoa, okay. Came back to it. Uh, if I... Yeah, th there's nothing really negative to say about it. I, you can hit at the price. It is 20 bucks. So, uh, oh, it does have a soundtrack. It's not bad. It's perfectly serviceable. But it is October, so as is tradition, I'm blaring typo, fuck mothering negative until the end of this month. Uh, as fun. I'll give it a solid three. I'd probably give it a solid four if it was a little cheaper in price, but I understand the price for something like this because it is telling a story. It's telling a narrative. And thank you. Thank you for doing that and also including a game. Good on you. Yeah, I mean, it's an all right, you know, chill out puzzler, right? There's like Vince said, it's it's very low key. There's no time limits or like health or sanity or anything like that. And you know what? The the puzzles are actually fairly well designed. Um, like 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 was said, you go forward, you go backwards. The time tra some of the time travel stuff is a little inconsistent, and it makes you and in some cases it makes you go, wait, I didn't realize I could do that given information mm -hmm. I was previously given in the game. But lo and behold, you can. One one example is like sawing through a board where like you have to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and it will saw through the board. But I couldn't really tell if it was making any progress. I thought it was like, no, you're just sawing one way and then you're going backwards. Oh no, this actually does work. Um Yeah, I, I agree with Ven. The um like I understand why they do it. They make you look go through all the time travel bits in real time because there's a lot of stuff going on in the background and they're and there, there's a lot of stuff where if you blink, you'll miss it. And it's crucial for solving the level, uh, watching things fly around because you have to put something on the right little blocky, spritey, run around thing uh, to get to, to actually complete the level. Requires you to actually pay attention. But at the same time, if it's like your third or fourth iteration and you realize like this was the last combination, yeah, it gets a little tiresome. I kind of wish I could fast forward through it a little bit. Just because like, yeah, I know it's going to happen. I solved the puzzle via process of elimination. Um... The nonverbal storytelling is relatively well done. There's clear, there's clearly a lot of history between these two characters, and you're sort of exploring it. But I've been trained by media to expect the dark twist, so I'm curious what sort of awful fate befalls them. My thought, my first theory was they got murdered by lightning. Um, <laughs> the, uh, um, yeah, the, 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 like, I, like I said, the, the puzzles are actually fairly well designed, and some of them like you will make you like stop and think about them. And other times you'll just accidentally sort of stumble upon the solution, but I think that that's okay for a puzzle game. You're you're allowed to have stuff like that. It makes you it lets you feel smart every so often. Um, and yeah, the music it's atmospheric, but honestly, I kind of found it a little boring, and so I modified the soundtrack featuring Lemmy. So I'll mm. give this two chairs. It's well done. 
it's not going to blow your mind, but it is, it is very commonly done. I don't hate it a hundred percent, but it's, 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 it's okay. It's fine. All right. Uh, well, I, for one, keep harping on about how games in certain genres don't really do anything to change my mind, uh, my mind about said genre. And, you know, about how every strategy game will have something that the strategy fan will love, but I just can't find it. Uh, well, I'll be damned if I didn't find the uh, the poster child for one such genre I don't particularly enjoy, and yet I still found something to love about uh, the gardens between. Uh, you know, the, the obvious sex joke aside about having the garden between your legs. Whatever. Um, the mechanics here are simple. They're forwards, backwards, and an occasional interaction prompt to move just specific bits of the puzzle about while the rest of time stands still. Uh, that, um, that works. The aesthetics here are also very simple. Simple designs, simple colors, simple sounds, which clearly indicate when you should be paying attention and when you run into something that's interactable. Uh, that's very good. But through all that simplicity, uh, and the almost complete lack of text shines the story with little to no telling in the literal or literary sense, they tell the story of the two kids and this trip that they're on down memory lane because this is basically them uh sitting in a tree house telling the stories about how they met and uh, what's been going on in their lives with uh, a little bit of a video game in between and that is really awesome if i had to just point out one thing that they did wrong it's the price it's a 15 pound game for at most four hours if you're trying to get all the secrets and get all the achievements. that That's a bit of a stretch. Uh, you know, compared to the Metro series, which were 60 pounds or um, 50 pounds on release uh, for eight hours of uh, gameplay, yeah, it's still looking better, but this isn't some massive AAA game. This is, you know, a really concise and well very well put together indie title it's just that the price is a bit much so for me it gets three chairs well that took about eight hours which is longer than the gameplay of this game anyways thanks for watching our review of the gardens between final thoughts maybe i mean do you have any final thoughts i might do you all right <laughs> no uh jordan's incapable of additional thoughts um mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm not gonna get into the whole argument about you know, what games should be priced, being a narrative experience. I expect something, you know, a bit higher. But then again, at nineteen ninety nine, what Stinky American Cash is, you gotta realize this is the same price as Rocket League. Yeah. So And you're not going to get anywhere near the amount of time you're going to get out of Rocket Cars. Nor the replay value. But we're talking about no. two different experiences. I commend them on making some artsy bullshit, which I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying what it is. It, it's interesting story that I'm, I'm going to finish this to figure out where it goes. Uh, better done than a lot, because I actually, even though like the story for me, I'm like, ah, all right, that's the thing. The gameplay is actually interesting. So yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. I like seeing that. I, I like seeing that amalgam. Yeah. The, the, the thing uh, here is that you're not actually in control of the characters. You're in control of time. The characters are doing their own thing. They're going to do their own thing in each of the levels. And more than once, I found myself shouting at the uh, friend person. It's like, what the hell are you doing? Chop, chop, motherfucker. This is a time puzzle thing. It's like, I want to get this. But no, you have to wait until he gets to position. And uh, I can see why they did it. It's like they're trying to tell you about the character that you're not controlling, but whose life you're currently uh, observing. And as a storytelling thing in a video game, which is very much a very good video game in its own merit, but they managed to tell a really interesting story in the midst of all of it. So that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, to, to to your to your point as well, there there is something really fascinating in like really restrictive gameplay and sort of coming up with creative solutions to how to make an engaging experience. Yeah. Uh and th th this 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 is a shining example of how you can essentially have a game that is all about indirect control 
where you can do very little but still have a lot of depth in the gameplay. So it's definitely worth a check out. Maybe it's a little pricey for you, for your blood. Maybe it'll go on sale. Uh, coming up next, we're talking about Chrome some more and game streaming. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time we put a bow on it. And hey, if we said anything that's completely fucking mental this motherfucker, during the show. I'll, I'll put a bow on you, man. <laughs> well, I have a bow already. A compound bow. We, it is. we say a lot of shit. can't see where it is. <laughs> Basically, it, it's the gist of the thing here. We say a lot of shit. So if you'd like to call us out on any of it, go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button. Fill out the form. See, make th- sure to that's pick. me wanting to like slap both of these. Guys. <laughs> that's what everyone yeah, thinks yeah. I'm waving. That's not a wave. That's like, yeah, mm. yeah this, this is like fucking <laughs> mo- mom from Futurama. <laughs> Quiet! Slap, slap, slap. See, like, just, uh, like just pop, make pop, sure pop. to pick uh, LGC Weekly from the little juicy box, and the rest is the usual spiel. So this One. week thing we do want to mention uh, we do have the capacity and we are on the lookout if you happen to be a game developer somebody working in the open source oh, yes. mildly <laughs> related to games we would love to talk to you get in touch with that form be like hey i'd like to talk to you too about my thing and we can spend 10 minutes having sexy time together then we can get you on the show and talk about mm-hmm. the thing Ta-da! look i did a thing i remember to do that 10 minutes is a bit of a push it, we're kind of a one minute deal. Listen, uh, in we, any way. We, we, we say 10 minutes, it always ends up being like 11. So, all right. <laughs> all right. So, this week we have the one bit of uh, hate mail and fit? comes yeah, from the Dementor. Uh, so, uh, he says, Dear LGC, I finally got around to write the below feedback that hopefully, that hopefully y'all will feature in the. Um, on the show. God damn it, I can't even read. I really don't understand all the excitement by Linux users about the Google game streaming solution. I think any cloud-based gaming streaming game streaming is a huge punch in the gut for gamers and gaming as a whole. If the game is hosted in the cloud, you have no access to the game files, I said that, uh, and assets and pretty much uh, get a game as a service when a company decides to kill that game or the company goes under, you lose the game forever. With so many open source projects that kept old games alive in one form or another, uh, for example, emulators, open source engines, OpenMW, OpenRA, and others, Wine, etc. If we didn't have access to the game data, we wouldn't be able to play at all these amazing games uh, that were forsaken by their manufacturers or that run on hardware that's impossible to get in 2018. I just wanted to bring all these points to your attention. Sorry for the super long rant. Keep up the amazing work. Out. Okay. So, uh, like I said um, in the uh, previous segment, what we talked about, um, yeah, no, I wholeheartedly agree because that's not a good thing uh i will accept it if it is just uh like a netflix style thing you pay a teeny tiny fee a month and you get to play all the games but if you don't have access to the games and you need to pay like full price for them that's not good that that's just not kosher I don't know how to do the bunny rabbit thing. I can do the dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like yeah. one of these. Like, yeah, I was going to I Google know. it, but I realized, was, wait, wait a minute, you, you, you're live on the show. And I was like, focus. So I just yeah. did the dog. Um, <laughs> so what'd you say, Pedro? Fuck you. I, 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 That's what I said. I, 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 I don't know. Something about loving game streaming. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, th- I think and any anyone who's been sort of embedded in gaming for a while has come to the same sort of conclusion where stre- streaming games is a nice dream. It makes it very accessible to people who can't necessarily afford really powerful computers mm-hmm. and who still want to experience games. But at the same time, we're aware of all the technical hurdles and the legal hurdles and the, the ownership right hurdles. And for, for all the potential that it has, it also, or all the positive potential that it has, it also has a lot of negative potential. And knowing publishers and at least the AAA space, mm-hmm. if this became if this became the norm, then it would be a hugely anti-consumer move. And I don't see it becoming the norm. Um, I see publishers fighting against this tooth and nail because then I can only sell you a one-time subscription to a service. 
as opposed to selling you a game and selling you DLC. Wait, is oh, DLC? Oh, they're going to try. I can see the EAs and the Ubisofts just going, no, you're still paying full price for this streaming would, game. It would be like a it would be like a cable package thing where it's like you get the base game for five ninety nine a month, but if you want to play as fucking Robin in your Batman game, then you got to pay six ninety nine a month. And if you want to see the good ending, it's going to be seven ninety nine a month, and it's just going to be worse and worse and worse. Hang on, like I said, yeah. what, if you want to play it at ten eighty p, it's six ninety nine. If you want to do yeah. fourteen forty at sixty. <laughs> Yeah, no, per, per per resolution, per uh, per frame price options. Oh, fuck so I yeah. can only I can only afford to pay play this at forty seven frames a second. Well, I mean, forty eight's out of my budget. It's going to be different. <laughs> the uh, price is going to be relegated to screen size. If you want to play it on mobile, it's a little bit cheaper. Desktop, oh, you you want to play it on the big screen? Then, mm, then you got to get the premium service. Let, let, like the like thing. I said, the, they're, they're, phones they're so have much, big they're, resolution. They're, screens yeah but they right, also but, say but, hey i'm a phone yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll also get prorated on data too um but yeah like we, we could we could sit here and theorize like a thousand ways that any that ea could fuck us over using a solution like this mm-hmm. or yeah. ubisoft um I, I I think there I think there's definitely room for web as a platform for games because everything fucking ships with a browser. I think what Firefox is trying to do with like ASMJS and like trying to import Unreal Engine three games into the browser, and what Unreal Engine four is kind of doing with their HTML five export or Git or Godot for that matter. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's a better thing. It gives you the opportunity to play the game anywhere, regardless of uh, regardless of your platform. Well, it does. And I will reiterate what, you know, Mr. Ed's like, yo, you know, unless I can download it. Ten years ago, that person was saying, fuck that. Only if I get a boxed copy, that's mine to own. Fuck just downloading it. That's just digital shit. I need a physical version. Well, the, yeah. we, we already we already kind of deal with that already. What well, with like games with on, always online DRM, if you mm-hmm, want to play a Blizzard mm-hmm. game, you got to have an internet connection. Um, that fucking SimCity game that didn't actually require to, you to be online Oops. constantly, but <laughs> but no, but that again, really pissed me shop- off, man. Have you ever tried to play that game in your submarine? Got to surface <laughs> yeah. like every fucking couple of days. Yeah, yeah, and uh, like Ishep said. Uh, Region locking is very much a thing, especially when Google services are taken into account, because, yeah, we're still region locked this podcast. If you're trying to listen to it through Google Play, it's still region locked in most of the world or ISP based throttling, because now, oh, if you want to if you want to stream your game, if you want to play your games, you got to pay for the better Internet connection that actually doesn't that allows us to, like, turn off throttling for your account or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like 100 percent. There's there's just too much bullshit that can be injected yeah. at multiple <laughs> levels. Not even even if the, even if the game publishers are going in there with the best of intentions, I guarantee you, people like Comcast and AT and T are looking at this and mm-hmm. going, "Yes, this oh, is they how absolutely we can fuck our are, man." I mean, over. California did a solid in you know past their own like, "Hey, let, let's keep the internet wide open," and yeah. instead of doing this tiered shit, and you know they did it good because genuinely, literally, actually. Good use of this word. Every ISP in North America in the United States sued them at once yeah. mm-hmm. to try to stop this. You're like, no, we paid good money to get this law reversed. Um, anyway. Yeah. As someone who uh, came from a country that has no net neutrality, who has the tiered internet shit, I can tell you that's not good. You don't want that. As someone from Canada who recently, whose country recently discovered that the internet exists and is <laughs> holding onto their copper infrastructure for dear life, I can tell you it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, on that bombshell, that's right. Let's cue that music. You can always find us around 930 Eastern Standard Moon Time. It's brilliant. We love you. Come join us live. Say disparaging remarks to us in real time. It's kind of fun. I'm Vince Stone. You can always find me at Vince Stone on Twitter. I'll talk to you there. Google Plus, talk to you there. Uh, If you're a patron, go ahead and hook up your Discord, man. Come chat with us. We actually hang out in our Discord during the week and uh, say things back to people because we love you. I'm Jordan Spung. If you want to interact with me on Twitter, you're going to have to pay for the Platinum service, which is an additional th- uh, $3.99 a month, and you can do that at The Burning Fool. Or if you want to talk to me on Google+, Plus, you're going to have to pay for the Ultra Platinum Diamond Fuck You level at $69.99.99.99 at Plus Jordan Spung.
And I am Pedro Mateus. I am a cheap hooker on the internet. You can find me on Twitter for free at unaccounted4 or on Google Plus at plus Pedro Mateus, also for free. So, yeah, come at me, boys. <laughs> so that's what we learned this week. Uh, not really surprising, not really news to either Jordan or myself. So let's just roll some old credits because. Wait, goddamn. That's the Stranger Things one. <laughs> hey, Pedro, you're on the show, and hey. Jordan, you're Jill. Jill. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's that's usually what happens. I turn into Jill after midnight. It's like it's a Cinderella thing. <laughs> hey, the names are all right. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's still there. Yeah. It'll be sorted in post. But if you're this watching, is gonna live, make no, this this will make no, this rant will make no sense if you're watching the recorded version. None. <laughs> You gotta get that super secret uh, uncut version. Yeah. That, that, that's why <laughs> you mean, gotta watch it, us live. <laughs> you, you, get, you get the context to all the fucking stupid jokes that we say. <laughs> it's only off by 182 episodes, man. <laughs> we got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> Die to fire. Bye. <laughs>